I start? Cool. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, my name is Guy Kawasaki, and I am a Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador. Uh, the brand ambassador per, uh, program uses uh, leaders in various areas. Uh, there's Roger Federer, for example, tennis player, uh, Garrett McNamara, big wave surfer, and then there's me, who is uh, neither an athlete uh, nor uh, a legendary person in the movie or entertainment business. I'm from the tech business, and I think we all know that a lot of the car business today is about tech, and so that's why I am the host here today. Uh, we have a plan for you, basically eight uh, sessions, inspirational talks over the next two days, with leaders both from uh, Mercedes-Benz as well as uh, industry leaders. Uh, my background is the chief evangelist of Apple. I worked for Apple twice, 1983 to 1987, 1995 to 1997. I'm also the chief evangelist of a company out of Australia today called Canva. Uh, I just finished a stint as the board of trustee of the Wikipedia uh, organization, and I'm an executive fellow at the Haas School of Business. But of all those things, uh, I think one of the coolest positions I have is the Mercedes-Benz brand ambassadorship. Uh, I want you to understand the, the sort of big picture of the future uh, direction of Mercedes. Uh, we have invented an acronym, CASE, C-A-S-E, and CASE, the four letters stand for Connected, Autonomous, Shared, and Electric. This first session is about primarily connection, connected, and we are going to discuss the car as a, a health device, as an auxiliary, as an addition to your lifestyle. And so I'm going to bring out two people. Uh, the first person uh, is Olav Kalenius. The second person is uh, David Agus. So David and Olav, if you join us. This is my colleague, and I have to say that he is a professor of medicine and engineering at the University of Southern California. Uh, it's with great pain that I introduce him because I went to Stanford and UCLA. I won't hold that against you, that you're at USC. Uh, he's a leader in medical technology, and he has a lot to say about the car as a health device. Hola here, Caladius. He's basically in charge of all of R&D for Mercedes-Benz, which, man, that is quite a job. I don't know. How do you do that? Pretty that exciting. Is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're in charge of R&D for Apple, all you have to do is, like, pull out the headphone jack from the next phone. But you, you really have to do some work. So uh, let's start off with a question. Um, the topic here is the C part of case, the connected. And, of course, the question that I think many people are curious about is, you know, how does a car uh, become a health device? Like, I have an E-Series, so I understand the massage, I understand the ionization, I understand those kind of things, I understand all the safety things, but you're far beyond that. This is about health, in-car health, like medical health. So let's start with you, giving us the big picture of car as health device. Well, thank you. Um, you know, when you think about it, right, what is health? Um, is it a blood test? Is it how you look? Is it how you feel? Has it how long you live? What really is health? Well, an algorithm to actually pull in different components of a holistic health is powerful. But in order to do that, you need data. You need to collect data. What better place in the world to collect data than in your car? You're sitting in it for an hour, two hours a day. In Los Angeles, where I live, it's nine hours a day. It's a whole different story. But it's the notion that we can collect data in the car and then use that data to actually make you think better and do better during the day, and especially drive better. When you get tired, we have biometrics that can pick that up. When you're stressed, we have biometrics that can pick that up. And whether it be the lighting, the music, the chair, we can affect that in the car. So to me, the car is the central hub. The car is a place we could do something that we've dreamed of in my field for decades, which is collect data. All right. And how do we integrate with this big picture? Well, uh, when we started this project, uh, we kind of went back to the roots of Mercedes-Benz. And one of the core values of Mercedes is obviously safety, protecting the driver, protecting the passengers. And when we started chatting some years ago here, 
we think, how can you go beyond? Mm -hmm. And one of those philosophies, I sometimes say, when you step into a Mercedes, you need to feel better when you step out than you felt when you actually stepped into the car. And uh, with the car that we're showing here, and uh, please have a look at that later, we said, let's put this fit, healthy, vitality topic at the center of a new innovation and a new development, where we use, as you said, David, the data, maybe from a wearable, maybe for touching the steering wheel, putting sensors into the car to register health data so the car knows how uh, the passenger or the driver feels, and then blend that into the technologies that you have in the car. Use the activation possibilities in the car for your body. And what am I talking about here? Motion, air, sound, light, scent. Also here is one of the programs is uh, called activation. Maybe you're starting early in the morning, uh, you're tired and you want to really kind of get woken up. You push this button, it gives you a gush of fresh cold air, puts on a nice scent, has a visual to it, plays with the lighting and the sound to really wake up your body. That's what it's all about. All right. So how do you put these two things together? You have the big vision, you have the academic, you have the science, and here's someone who has to deliver a product every day. How do we put these two things together? Well, you know, to me, it's been separate worlds. And so for the first time, when we met probably two years ago or so, or even more than that now, you know, we sat down and you got it. And Mercedes got it. They cared about the individual. And to me, that was very powerful. You know, there's very simple technology that we can measure the variability in your heart rate and know how stressed you are. Right? If you relax, your heart rate is even. Bang, bang. If you're a little bit stressed, it's off by milliseconds, and we can measure that. So we can have a way of knowing how you feel and to build that in. At the same time, you know, there's an amazing story I always tell, which I love, that goes back to the 1950s. And so in this story, um, there were 26,000 workers in the British Transit Authority. And half of them sat 90% of the day and drove the truck, or the bus. Half of them were ticket takers that walked up and down those double-decker buses. They weighed the same, smoked the same, and lived in the same environment, yet dramatically lower heart disease and cancer in the ticket takers. We've become a society of bus drivers. We sit all day. Our car is sitting. So Mercedes didn't take that lightly. They said, let's figure out ways to activate the body. Let's look at the physiology of movement and see if we can replicate that in the car so there aren't health detriments in sitting in the car so we can actually be healthy. And to me, it was powerful. And so it was such a privilege to work with people who got it. And we're able to push that to the consumer because the message really resonates. Well, that project, uh, David, we call uh, motion seating. And it's such a simple idea, uh, but nobody's ever done it before. You take the seat, which is in itself a very sophisticated technical device in the meantime in the car, and you can go from the simplest things, just change the position of the seat and the seat back and the cushion, to adjust how your body is positioned in the seat. And that motion alone, yeah. I understand, stimulates your blood flow and your muscles and, and uh, make sure that your back doesn't get stiff. On top of that, we of course have the massage function and you can also work with sound, with sound that gives you a buzz, almost like the bass if you go to a concert that activates your body. So if you're on a longer drive, the car can feel how you feel and activate you so that when you step out of that drive, you don't have to go and see an orthopedic surgeon, you actually feel fresh, your back is in good shape, and your blood circulation is also uh, in good shape, and you can prevent maybe some of these diseases. Now, now, 10 years from now, five years from now, maybe two years from now, when we're more and more autonomous, approaching completely autonomous, then what? Now you can do much more, right? But we're because... autonomous or the car's autonomous? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the car is autonomous. Ah. So in this, this, per this perfect world, totally autonomous car, now what can you do for health? We haven't quite yet started the project where we're going to put a treadmill into the car. <laughs> the packaging of that still poses some challenges to us. But jokes aside, I think that's an opportunity. Uh, we're not going to do away with driving. If you want to drive yourself, and I learned from you, David, actually driving is a pretty healthy exercise, especially if you're going down a winding road and you're working those arms. And, uh, well, it's more than healthy. It's good for you. Remember, our body evolved that he or she who went hunting and found the way back to the village survived. So pattern recognition with physical activity is what our brain was meant for. Driving makes us smarter. 
So that we're not going to abolish, uh, and uh, we will add in autonomous drive a wealth of other things that you can do in the car when you're in the car. And with some of the coaching that we're doing in the ecosystem, we're linking this to Mercedes Me. So if I activate my Mercedes Me app here, here I am, this is my car. It's also an S-Class. Uh, I could actually get a lesson from you, David. What am I supposed to do in the car? Yeah. Uh, but I can also get an update and get data on my Mercedes Me ecosystem that gives me tips and also helps me or helps the car automatically activate uh, so that I have this healthy lifestyle in mind when I'm driving a Mercedes or riding in a Mercedes. All right. So should we take some questions? I would love it. All right. Any questions, anybody? And uh, I want to start off. We got some over social media. And this is a question that what personal data will be shared? I mean, some concerns about privacy. That of the data is collected in a car. So well, privacy, what is, with that? privacy is, of course, uh, absolutely key, key to our customers. And we will not share any of the data that is personal with anybody else, obviously. And that is the philosophy that we're applying already today to Mercedes Me, that the data belongs to you. And we will only use the data in your interest as you would like it to be used. OK. Any questions from the audience? Uh, we have some people with mics, right? OK, I have more questions for them, so I, you know, don't ask. I'm fine. So oh, yes, yes. Uh, where's the mic? Uh, ac excellent uh, topic so far. How are you going to monitor the in-cabin air, particularly in environments like Los Angeles? <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> Beijing is worse. <laughs> We already have very sophisticated filters in our cars to make sure that the air that goes into the cabin is uh, very clean. And uh, in uh, markets where there is more relevant, uh, you mentioned China, we're going to put also in display so you can see what the difference is between outside and inside. And uh, you would be amazed uh, at how clean the air is in your car compared to outside in some situations. So yes, that's also a relevant use case uh, next to the other things that I mentioned, the cleanliness of the air. That's one of the things that almost upset me about Mercedes, is when I started to work with you guys, we would talk about air cleanliness and noise, and they say, we do this, and here's the data. And it was all there. The problem is, me as a consumer sitting there, I didn't know it. And so being able to visualize what the air is in the inside and the outside is paramount. You know, a study came in Europe showing the closer you live to an airport, the higher the rate of brain decline which means our body needed quiet at night for our brain to regenerate. Well, the cabin noise in the S-Class is so quiet, it's amazing, and it really is good for your brain. But at the same time, I don't know that. You know, I didn't know that until I started to work with you guys. So I want you guys to proclaim more some of these traits because it really pushes the field forward and pushes health forward, which is great. So good engineering, but not good enough marketing. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember that. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking for someone who's been on both sides of that discussion, it's much easier to fix the marketing than it is to fix the <laughs> engineering. So, so I could, you know, I, I have an E-Class, so I could, and I know there's like 62 different color interior choices, mm. right? Um, it would be cool if, you know, when the air is good, it's green, and you know, that light can change to red when it's outside. Don't get outside your car or something like that. That would be very cool. Now, uh, when we were prepping for this session, uh, I learned something about David that I did not know. And so this is, uh, we're going to kind of go down a little bit of a rat hole, but this is a unique rat hole. And, you know, the mark of a good host of a presentation like this is that you never go down rat holes. But the mark of a great moderator is that you can go down a rat hole and come back. And I'm going to show you how You're that's done. You're getting me done. very scared yes. here. Yes, yes, yes. So I want you to tell the Steve Jobs story you told me. Because sure. he was the doctor of Steve Jobs. Well... You know, I would go to see Steve once a week, and, you know, we talked about motion, and, you know, our bodies were designed to move. So the first thing Steve said is, David, we need to go for a walk. And he goes, there are two reasons for a walk. The first reason is the health benefits, and he said, you know all about that. He said, the second reason is when you go for a walk with someone, and you get to a corner, and you know whether you're going to turn left or right, and they don't, it gives you an advantage in the business negotiations. So Steve thought about every different angle to what he did, and it was really amazing to watch that side of him. And beautiful. And by the way, Steve drove a Mercedes. I know. An AMG <laughs> even. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful white one. But, well, was he the worst customer in the world? Did he, like, 
Who's the worst customer in the world? No, it was Steve the worst customer in the world? Absolutely not. He was a great customer. He loved Mercedes and yeah. had a, an SL55 AMG, yeah. which was uh, his personal and favorite car. Yeah. And uh, a little known story of Steve Jobs, he never registered his cars. I mean, he had something against registering his cars. I don't, you know, but when you're Steve Jobs, the rules of the California Department of Motor Vehicles don't apply to you. Uh, one last question it's from social media. 17 milligrams twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> one last question from social media is, someone wants to know, well, will these high-end, super fantastic health benefits, will it just be the S-Class, or is it going to permeate the entire Mercedes line? No, we're going to go through our whole product line from top to bottom. And I think this is one of the unique things of Mercedes. When we, in the, uh, when we introduce an innovation, mm -hmm. and usually the S-Class as the flagship of our product portfolio is that innovation carrier, very quickly we move that technology into our other models. So some of the fit and healthy features that we're working on, uh, some of them will even be launched first on the next generation A-Class. Oh, so we really? will go top and we will go entry position into our uh, uh, portfolio as well. So don't worry about it. Hundreds of thousands of people will be able to use and enjoy this technology. Fantastic. But you know, it's, it, what's cool about you guys is it goes even you know, simpler. You do things that we don't see at all. And you know, what amazed me is that sound, right? When the airbag goes off and you get in a collision, people have permanent hearing loss. And so you guys design a pop when the car thinks it's going to crash, and there's a pre-tensioning in the ear and then there's no hearing loss. So hopefully none of us ever need that feature, but it's great to know it's there. And is it in all the cars now or is it in? That's in all our new cars. It's great. And uh, as they say, what makes a Mercedes a Mercedes, it's the sum of all those little details. Yeah. All right. So uh, the bottom line from this first of our inspiration talks is it's probably healthier to be inside a Mercedes than anywhere else on the road, right? And bottom line. So it's healthier okay. to be at the gym and working out. <laughs> well, but Mercedes, but relatively is... speaking, relatively speaking. So uh, thank you for listening to this, and we'll be on the side here, uh, happy to talk to you, uh, take selfies, whatever you want to do. Yep. And uh, thank you very much, David. Hola, and. Yep. Uh, Thank you for attending. Thank, Thank you for you coming. Guys. Our next session, next session in 40 minutes, is uh, the person who is in charge of this case phenomenon, this, this case big picture. Uh, and he will explain case in greater detail. His name is Axel Harris. And we also have Roger Atkins of uh, electronic, Electric Vehicles Outlook. So come back in 40 minutes, and we're going to talk about the big picture of case. Thank you very much.